keep on reading, keep on reading. You read, you forget, which is very, very natural. So when you notice you've forgotten a particular stuff, just pick up your book, read again. There are tendencies you forget again, but that's that's life. So when you forget, you pick again and you read until the day of the exam. There's one common thing in medical school, it's called outline. So you must have written you must have written enough outlines to pass of distinction. You must try to get well above 80% in everything because at the end of the day, the 80% may not really count. I'm Omoni or Taiwa Kitsune, a fifth year medical student. Adebayo Temidayo, a fifth year medical student in Nigeria. My name is Ken Yalari, a fifth year medical student in Nigeria. I took pathology. Uh, which comprises um, four major um, courses microbiology, histopath, chemical pathology, uh, animatology, then um, pharmacology, so making five in total. Throughout four the level, we had pathology and pharmacology. In pathology, we had chemical pathology, microbiology, histopathology, and hematology. We do other posting too along the way. Uh, we had medicine, surgery, we had community medicine. What else do we have? I think that's all. Normally, it should be 18 months, but I spent three years. Uh, and that's, that was as a result of um, COVID strikes and some other things that came in in between. Normally, in, in my school, we use 18 months, but due to some circumstances, I spent three years in Fund 11. We started in October 2019 and we finished October, September, October 2022. And that was because of COVID and several strikes. Normal duration for a funded level in my, in my university will be 18 months. How uh, relatively I did? Well, initially I enjoyed it when the vibes were still there. But along this nine, after many strikes, the COVID came and everything, I lost interest. And that's why I was about found the level and me enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yes. Depending on the extracurricular activities, if it's something that is going to take time, okay, I'll say probably in early funded level you can still do your extracurricular activities. But closer to why you're writing your pathology and pharmacology exam, it's going to be more demanding and you might not really have time to balance stuff. So if you are not good at balancing things together, you might not be able to take extracurricular activities at that time. Extracurricular activities, it depends on the extracurricular, it depends on how demanding it is. It can be done on the level, especially at the initial stage of the level, can start featuring the things extracurricular activities in front grade but along the line as the stuff front level start demanding then some have to be regulating and maintaining balance as well as balance is best as sure can do extracurricular activities okay I, you can do whatever you want to do in med school depends on you understanding yourself understanding your schedule and understanding that you still have to read and pass for pathology alone that's around three let's say seven Start with the intro posting, then go to maintenance, maintenance, surgery posting. Then we do the block, block two, the pediatric so and G, pediatric so and G, the community medicine, and block two, block three. Then we do maintenance, surgery posting again. Yeah, I would say my initial surgery posting probably did that to my bias and surgery inclined. So my first exposure to surgery was very, very exciting. I can remember that was the time I was still watching Following Grace Anatomy series. So that time was the most exciting posting for me in front of the level. I think the first dermatology posting I did, because I had to do two dermatology postings, two circumstances. So the first dermatology posting I did, it was enjoyable and I don't know, probably because there was new stores I and I enjoy hearing those flat up hilarious and the likes, but it was fun. Of course, pediatrics. I just loved it. Like I, I found it very, very interesting. Oh my end of posting exam in four hundred level I'm the kind of person that like reading, even I hear the words we are taught. So preparing for any of posting exam means me taking notes, reading notes of my textbooks, read slides, then I like my group discussion. I'm a group discussion person, so I have 
what two group discussion one of the people from preclinicals and when i started in front level they really helped in i like discussing with somebody's child so that's how i prepare for my end of posting exams from the level the end of postings are okay i think for blog postings which is pathology and pharmacology is advisable you start reading those postings from day one of your posting it's going to be yeah it is eight weeks so we take posting we take the uh, reading seriously from you might not be serious for the first week but you, you start reading very early so that you can cover a lot because it's always very bulky so that you can cover a lot of ground so you start very early but for other end of postings like medicine surgeries you just take the important the important diseases that are common in the environment then you probably have to read those ones first and till the end of postings we then can cover other things um most of these post clinical postings are the exam are also clinical exams so you want to during the posting you must have known how to ask take history from patients um do examination general examination and all those examinations so that's how i prepare okay um preparation started um last year and okay i do what is called active recall so when i read instead of um, jotting directly from a textbook so what i do is i i ask myself questions instead so after reading a particular chapter I extract questions for myself and whenever i want to revise that chapter i try to see if i can answer those questions so if i can't then i revise um, the topic again until i'm able to answer those questions and um, sometimes also I record certain stuff that I think okay I might forget so I just record them so whenever I'm less busy and somewhere I can just bring out my uh, earphones and plug it in my ears and start listening to them. I started with writing what we thought in introductory because you know I said we spent three years so it has been long we did it so I revised everything we thought in introductory before we, we started block one I'm not mm -hmm. sure I understand everything I watch videos I'm not a person that watch videos no matter but to understand this I watch videos and after I read I made sure I challenge my brain by going online to look for questions similar questions as well solving in solving past questions then discussing with people my discussion group to really help. That's how I prepare for my best part one. Then towards the practical, I make sure I go for practical and do everything. So I make sure that I pass. That's how I prepare actually. MBS exam, a long story short, I, okay, personally, I enjoy group discussions. So I attended more of my group discussion because MBS2 was very bulky. When, by the time you look at the things you have to read, pathology, the whole of pathology and for the four things in pathology, even ordinary is to pathology is too, <laughs> too much to comprehend. You, you, uh, by the time they tell you it's just one month to, just one month to MBS, you have not even read like one quarter of is to pathology. I still have like five other things to read. Then you still have practicals and like, so I think I enjoy I enjoyed the company of friends, so I attended more of group discussions. We discussed so the little things I hear, the things I read, I hear there, the little things I read too, and everything combined together. I think that was what worked for me actually. Number one, group discussions. I I do more of discussions. Then I take important, I take important topics first. From from the way you take your lectures, you must have known the important topics that you know that these ones are these particular topics are unavoidable. Like you are reading your chemical pathology and you are talking about OGTT, you are talking about histopathology and you are talking about inflammations and the like. So I read I read those I read those simple simple ones first. Then then with the AOC towards the exam, our lecturers did well to give us area of concentration. So I read those ones too. By the time I was done reading those ones, I I think it, those ones boost, boosted my confidence a little, so I survived. The reading strategy, I like reading two or three techniques. So if I read, like, take for example, if I, I read hematology in, of brand, I like to check hematology in the clinical practice, then go for online check for video, after checking video, then go for standard exam as well, probably some past question of some schools abroad, try to do it again, then do my own school past question. So that's how I prepare. That's my own strategy. I like challenging my brain after I've read. 
like I like then I'm a kind of person that like asking questions and I like discussing with people. So that's if I read something now, I like to look for someone to discuss with so that I can move that stuff with the person. So that's my recent strategy. And um, first things first, before any exam, I used to tell myself I'll pass. So um, that helps, helps me uh, deal with anxiety a lot. And aside that, I ensure that I adequately prepare for uh, my exams, such that for an exam, I know if I, I'm going to do so well, I definitely know I'm always going to pass, but I used to evaluate myself if I'm going to do um, so well or just fairly or averagely. So usually, I'm not usually anxious on the day of the exam. Initially, I'm not a person that I'm always anxious, for example, probably the way I've been to my, to my past experiences, I'm not an anxious person. What I used to tell myself is, I, I used to ask, assess my preparation level. If I've prepared to a past level, I know I've passed. If I've prepared to an excellent level, I know that, okay, I can go for excellence. Because I know, after doing some past questions and hoping for the best, I know that all things be equal, I should pass. So I'm not the best kind of person that I'll show. And I'll do well with that kind of stuff is, Constantly remembering myself, remembering myself that I'm in this school to pass. Then, constantly remembering myself that every exam is doable. Some people have done it before, they've passed, so I can do it and pass. Then, constantly reminding myself that I'm brilliant enough to pass this exam. So, those stuff are really helping that. I don't just go to exam with ansh being anxious of passing, even if I've not read. I just have this mindset that I'm going to pass this exam. The menu is passing very well, that's not the next thing. There was theory, there was MCQs, and there were practicals. So we did the MCQs and theory in a day for a particular course. It was a five-day exam. It was a two-week exam. For the first week, we had um, each subject per day. For each subject, we do the MCQ in the morning, then the theory in the afternoon. In the afternoon. So for the whole week, then the second week, we had practicals, then orals. I start by saying the 400 level is really, really tough. Surely pathology, very, very tough. So um, concerning the dynamics, it's, it's, I'll just say you should deal with it in whatever form it, it appears to you. Like just enjoy every step and make sure you are winning on every step so that um, when the exam comes, you have, um, a certain um you have you are just certain that you are just going to do well so pathology is it has its own um in three cases like that like complex you just deal with it as you pass through it so dynamic of pathology exam pathology exam start from our the eop the continuous assessment we've been gathering over the years the attendance in class then the real exam now start with the mcq we're going to be Depending on school, now school is 500 questions, MCQ, then it's theory, we're going to answer like six, seven, eight theory questions, then the practical and the oral exam, which now has the revival exams. So those are the dynamics, and every, every part of this exam are very, very crucial and important to passing. I, I just feel it's a knowing, sort of. It's a knowing, sort of. Um, okay, sometimes you read. And um, get to the point, you know that you are just saturated with this stuff to a certain degree. So you know that at all at all now I'll pass sort of. So that's just that's just it. There's really no catch. To write the exam, you must have paid your tuition. Then you must meet up to 75% of attendance for lectures. It was very hard. Yeah, no exam is easy. So this exam, I would say, is it is a test for knowledge. This my particular exam was test for knowledge. It's not relatively simple, and I would say it's hard, because on average level the exam is very hard. Except if someone have prepared, exam is simple when come out and passed. But on the average level, the exam is I found the exam very hard. Ah, to be sincere, um, I did not really find um, it hard, except for for my histopad practical of course so i feel the rest i was well prepared i to an extent me was going to had an idea of okay what was going to come out so i prepared like in that line but for my histopathology practical uh though we have been preparing but that day i had this physiological imbalance i was hypoglycemic and 
I was just in balance, sort of looking at the slides. I was, I didn't sleep enough to that day, so that made it a little bit difficult for me. So that was the only part of the exam I can say was difficult for me. The first thing I do after writing the initial exam is I firstly assess myself. Yeah, because going to an exam, I always have a goal. For my sake, like I have a goal, like I don't like personally, for example, for my sake, I have my goals of not missing more than 50 questions. So that at the end of the day, I can have 450 over 500 with the negative markings, if it's going to be half, then I will be able to have for 25, which is well above. 80 percent so i get to reflect on those questions which one i could remember that i got very well which one i remember i guess so if i didn't meet my target i would feel bad honestly feel bad no matter what i got then my theory question my theory question I'm mindset of getting there with 70 percent plus so if i couldn't do the theory question very well then that's the time that's the major determinant of each exam like my camp part was fine my history part was not really really cool because the mcq was fine but the theory was not what i was expecting so i didn't meet the expectation theory same with my pharmacology my mcq pharmacology was fine but the theory the time was too short for me to write much as i wish to so it depends on exam and meeting my target to the exam so that depends my mood after the exam okay on monday talking about each day on monday i felt you can't you can't be too happy you can't be too sad because you can't you can't reminisce on what happened in this particular exam you have to just prepare for what's going to happen the next day and the next day and the next day until friday when we're done with the whole written with the, the whole written format i think i had i had to rest because the next week was practical so i i did more of resting then read the particular things i could read uh, attended discussions like i said then I was able to survive practical, but when I was done writing the whole exam, things was more of palpitation. Was that going to pass? They asked me this. I didn't know in Viva. Is that is that going to fail me? All these, you know, all this uncertainty just setting me. Uh, um, after writing each exam, okay. Um, for example, we wrote Kempa the first day. I knew for sure after that exam that I had passed. So same for. So part same for um, so for everything for everything. Immediately I finished my exam. In my um, viva already knew I was already already near I passed. So there was no doubt about that. Okay, the tips to passing essay exams. Um, there's there's one common thing in medical school. It's called outline. So you must have written. You must have written enough outlines to pass. You most likely know the areas that are not unavoidable that you can't avoid in exams, and you might have known the things the lecturers are going to add, and they might have told you before that okay, we are going to ask you this like area of concentration and like so. You must have written outlines on so that when they ask you, you know number one the time factor. You have to know uh, how to manage your time in essay. So you want to schedule your you want to schedule your timing on based on those questions number two is how many questions are you going to ask you so that you can be prepared for the worst then for number three is how uh, of the questions they are going to if they are going to ask you five questions what that what is going to be the pattern of those questions for hematology you already knew okay number one is going to be about anemia so the best thing we could do at that point was to read everything about read everything about anemia and you know that number one is done then number two, you already know the pattern of things for that particular course. So take those pattern of things, then make outlines on different parts of it, and I think you survive. It is for MCQ. Um, MCQs actually depend depend on your stuff level. If you look at some questions, you just know for sure that okay, this is wrong, and you look at some, um, you are not too sure. So in that case, you can you can uh, do 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 an intelligent guess. Uh, but when you see that you are guessing too much, you can try to um, um, try to draw yourself back. That okay, I'm guessing too much. But then, uh, MCQ depends on your stuff level. If you know it, you just know for sure. Okay, this is I'm hundred percent sure. This is very very wrong. In fact, you can bet your kidney that this one is wrong. But then there will always be sometimes two similar options that you have to okay, just say okay, I'm not too sure. But then I think. And sometimes the 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 questions uh, give you the answers. Sometimes, uh, you know, in medicine they used to say never say never. You are saying um, um, stuff like always, never in your questions. Just know that this one is wrong, Jerry. Or maybe they are asking that all of these are 
maybe a question that is just the question alone is telling you that okay this mcq has just one question to be true so instead of wasting your if you if you know the one that is the most correct you can pick it but if you are not too sure just force everything and just move on okay. about one during postings make sure you attend those practicals because they are very important they are not going to bring something outside what they've been doing and even they're going to bring it's going to be very minimal you might want to attend most of your practical sessions and not just attend you have to be very active during those practicals do the things they are doing take the baker boil the boilables eat the tables and do all those things yourself so that when it gets to the real practical is they are not strange to you and that will save you a lot of time and a lot of stress and a lot of panicking for revision, um, there's really no catch. The thing is, just keep on reading, keep on reading, keep on reading. You read, you forget, which is very, very natural. So when you notice you've forgotten a particular stuff, just pick up your book, read again. There are tendencies you forget again, but that's that's life. So when you forget, you pick again and you read until the day of the exam. Well, having the station American school is something of great joy because it's like a dream come true because everybody had distinction, never had distinction by chance. Everybody worked towards having distinction, hope for having distinction. And for people that have been having it in the past where they might not feel good, but for the people that's having it for the first time like me, because this is my first distinction I've been actually. So it's actually very, very like remember what our part one went that I hope for it and later did not get it. So I mean, this session is something like like it's you achieved. It gives some sort of like you could achieve something. So that's the thing is I, I got from having the distinction. Then having this session actually shows that you actually not that dull. That at least you are at least what you are doing, the effort you be putting really show off. Things really pay off. Because at the end of the day, having close to the station period, the station marks actually depress people a lot. It's not actually people that feel that always got depressed most time. People that very distinction man got used to really depressed for me, pretty depressed me a lot. At least you I don't know they get to see that it doesn't really count. Everybody have from past the, at the end of the day, but having distinction actually give you a sense of fulfillment. Okay. So do you have tips for having distinctions? Yes. I say I have tips although there's no there's no laid down principle or rules. There's it's not there's no adam fast to it, but there are some certain things that I think if uh, we start with the mindset of I want to have this distinction. After the mindset then you have to do some things, you have to be strategic about it. Like take your post every of a person very serious, try to understand what they are teaching you. This you meet people for forever that will not be your internet examiner. Then try to have goals for everything. It starts from the continuous assessment. If you have goals that you are not having less than 25 or less than 23 or less than 20, the continuous assessment over 30, then I've goal for every part of the exam. I just said to you, like, from MCK, I've got for 450, like, well above 80% in every part of my exam, especially the practical. So the practical should be an easy workover. So you have goals of passing your practical very well and everything. So that's are the ways for it. Like, if someone to have distinction, must try to get well above eighty percent in everything because at the end of the day the eighty percent may not really count because at the end of the day you still get your seventies. So that's the goals, that's the target, the dream. Like start from your C continuous assessment, having well above thirty in your continuous well above twenty your continuous assessment, getting fifty to it in exam will be very easy that way. Yeah, after failing part two exam, actually I would say it's one of the hard period for medical center actually but it's something doable that's happened to people in the past and people have get, gotten their ways around it. Failing pathology exam is because we're looking at the rigor because failing pathology or pharmacology is very very stressful to be careful but it's something they will just a second chance we have been given that to show them that you are actually who you are. It's another chance to prove to them that you are not what they think you are. Yeah, brilliant. It's just some circumstances that make somebody feel nobody is meant to be fooled. So it's just for someone to buckle up and get back to this book, read it, do your posting, join your meeting, their senior posting, do it. There are people that receipt that receipt in part three exam and still get away to to shine part three exam. So it's not about it. There are people that do well in part one that won't do well in part two. There are people that don't do well in part one that will do well in part two. So that's all about exam. So failure is not the end. 
actually failure is not the end at one point at time in each in one's life someone will have a moment to pray, to feel this part of experience of life they're part of experiences of life and be bold and happy about that you are given second chance to come and write again and it's time for you to now prove to the world that you are not the person who the former result is printing you to be so you are not a failure nobody is a failure actually so for someone to fail it could be some due to so many circumstances anybody could fail at any time but that's not the end so we just have to gather up ourselves when we fail get to prepare for the exam again write it again do it much better and even the subsequent exam Try to prove to people that you are not dull. Do it more better. That's at the end of it. We didn't feel more to write the exam and join on it. So there's nothing much about failing any best part. So. Uh, I think I said that earlier. I was, I was having palpitation. I was, not, I was not sure whether I was going to pass, whether I was going to fail. What was I tell them at home? I failed this particular exam and the fear of having to rewrite an exam or having to resit for an exam where why my mate are already ahead of me, they are already taking courses in other in, in other in, at the other level. So I was very afraid. I didn't want to I didn't want to fail and I was just I was just not stable at that point. So how did you feel before the result came out? Uh, before the result came out I was not anxious. Like I said I already knew I had passed. So I was just waiting for the good news and and it came at the right time, so I was very, very happy, very glad. Okay, so how did you react when you received the results and the final results? Uh, I was very happy, not just that I passed, and the, the whole class passed. But for me, the, personally, I passed. I was, I think I was very happy. I had to leave where I was just to go to where my meta so that I can, so that I can express my joy to, to everybody. I think I was very, very happy. Remember. But I remembered um, calling a friend of mine just to ask if he had seen the results. So he didn't pick up the phone, but I think I called someone else just to you know the normal stuff now. Congratulations, blah, 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 like that. So, well, before the results came out, I was actually hoping to get a good SNN grade. Depending, actually, after going through the fiber exam i have some doubt of getting excellent results in some aspect like I, I was hoping for pharmacology to to be very good my patho my pathology fiber was not that very fine it was not that very nice as it was, i was expecting it to be because the external examiner does not ask me the question i know actually but at the end of the day i keep up hoping hoping that okay everybody is having the answers i know i can't feel so failure is not the is not my it's not the cause of my sight it's because of my sight is doing that it's an way well. so at the end of the day when i get to open and my friend keep calling i keep calling my friends to get to know about their state to you know my friend that we we are close together chat we chatted we talk about our five experiences our the entire exam experiences and what we're hoping for so that was all my states before the before seeing the result of my MBBS part two, I would say I was anxious actually. Anxious is an understatement. I was very anxious. And that's. I was checking this, the results. It was my very, very close friend that called me and told me about the result that finally I had this situation because I didn't even believe him. So I had to go there myself to go and check. That actually, I was very, very happy that. At last, I was very, I, I was able to add this, to have distinction. Prior to this, having distinction in part and from was not that important to me or to some circumstances in close to exam that are caused. Because I have one of my mentors, I was hoping for my dreams, all these dreams. I have one of my mentors that message that was telling me that for me to progress in my academic pursuits, I need to get distinction in medical schools. At that time, I was depressed, going not fully aware that it's not easy getting distinction in Nigerian medical schools. So, so I was. That was the time I was. Start, I started hoping. I started working towards distinction. That was months, like few weeks to MBBA. So getting it was relieving. I called people. I called my sister. I called my team. That at last I was able to achieve it. Called the, my mentor. That I message my mentor. That at last I was able to get this distinction. I was very very happy about it. I'm about to write the part two exam. The thing is start early, so that would boost your confidence. Really, start very very early. And try as much as possible to understand, even as you read. Uh, there will be times it will be as if really you have been playing. 
But then the fact that you have been reading in one way or the other covers up for 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 you sort of so start early so if you're able to start early it boosts your confidence and it helps you prepare well such that once the exam now during the exam or the revision time they are going to give you um before the exam usually is not going to be enough but if um you are to, uh, if you if you have took your time to understood the basic concepts of what you're supposed to know so when the exam comes you just maybe revise and you are good to go just enjoy medical school. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be hard, but generally, is I think we all go through the same thing as medical students, whether here or abroad. There's something common to medicine is that it's always stressful. So as much as much as you can enjoy your enjoy your time in medical school, do extra curriculars if you think you can survive, you can survive it, and just enjoy yourself. For medical students watching me right now, watching this, that's preparing for one exam or the other, whether EUP, whether in courses, whether part one, whether part two in BBS, is that give it, give all your best to it, give it what it takes, then believe in God. Everything bounce back to being helped. There's favor that is grace that comes along with believing in God and actually then we know that med 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 school is demanding, then we give what it takes. If I'm open to to pass, don't just target fifty. Target to get well above fifties. Because we know everybody knows 50 is past mark, but we know the way situation of things being. Then so most time get 50, you get to be an emperor or something when, when we're targeting it. So we hope for targeting well above 50 so that at the end of the day we pass very well. And people that are hoping for getting for distinction, get to believe in it, believe you can do it, believe in yourself. Don't entertain any form of doubt, believe you can do it. Don't allow circumstances of things, don't allow the history you've had, the story they've told you to affect you. Just believe in yourself that you can make it and that's all. Reunite Oh, I'm digging Got my feet on Stop